Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are once again on the updates 1.97 dev server and having a look at the CV90, but this is a special version of the CV90, it's the one with the 120mm. So what is interesting about the CV90 is that there's a bunch of different versions. You technically right now have four in the game, uh, so you've got the CV90-120, the CV90-105, uh, which is the uh, premium uh, one for rank 6. Uh, this is going to be a bundle vehicle, I believe. Then you have the STRF-90C, which is uh, the one with the 40mm on it, with this really interesting turret. And then, of course, you have the LVKV-90C as well, which is that with an R2-D2 on it, which acts as a radar. So there's a bunch of different, you know, CV-90s in the game, and it's really nice to see the uh, general way that uh, they implement them. But this one is the one with the big gun. Uh, this <laughs> this one is the one which is no messing around, 120mm, uh, you know wonderful donk gun. So it also has a coaxial 7.62mm uh, attached to it, uh, which is, you know, uh, I suppose nice, but uh, the main reason we're here is to smash people with the 120. The 120 is two-plane stabilized, uh, which is really nice and really good for business. And what is kind of surprising about this CV-90 is there's only three crew. You got a driver in the front, you got a gunner here, and then you've got a commander. You then also have a ton of ammunition in the back here, but uh, as you can see, nothing is set as first order ammunition yet. Uh, this thing can technically carry 40 rounds of ammunition. Obviously, bringing 40 rounds would be a bit of a stretch, uh, in my opinion. Um, but what is uh, nice about it is it also has some composite armor in uh, the uh, front of it, very similar to other machines that we've seen, uh, such as stuff like the Type 89. This can help it against a lot lighter vehicles. The general armor profile, when we have a look at the CV-90, is incredibly light. What I mean by this is we're not really looking at anything more than 20 millimeters on the hull, and the only thing that's really going to keep it alive ever is if somebody pings off at a very odd angle. A lot of this impact angle, as you can see from the side view, is incredibly angled, but I still don't think this will help it that much, because what will happen is, you know, shots will hit it, and then they'll bounce straight into the turret, and then they're not going to ricochet off they're going to ricochet through so this turret is once again only 30 millimeters and massively relies on angles as you can see uh, two stop shells coming in and therefore it uh, is going to eventually well i suppose it could work quite a lot but eventually it will mean that it will be perforated the other thing is on the sides this machine has no armor six millimeters uh, is what we're talking about 12 millimeters and then underneath is maybe 13 then on the booty we have 20 millimeters so technically if we're following the laws of hole break uh, which you know sometimes we try to uh, this thing should be able to get hole broken which would be very sad indeed um, and it is another one of those machines which is 35 tons but does have an 800 horsepower engine so it does have a good kick uh, into it and therefore should have good acceleration on top of it there is a bug that i found with the cv 9120 the bug is the fact that uh, the aiming reticle doesn't seem to line up with the mouse, uh, but I'm sure that will be fixed when the dev server goes live. Let's have a look at the modifications then. So first things first, uh, the fact the gun has a stock DM23 round, then it has a heat FS round with 480 millimeters a pen then we have a he round because why not and then also a dm33 round what's interesting is the he round is just a random rank 2 round i'm just wondering if whether this is supposed to be like a hedf uh, thing or if this is supposed to be something else uh, but right now at least it's just an unlockable he shell which is at a rank 2 just completely random it does have some smoke grenades which is nice also thermals are kind of a necessity for this uh, style of vehicle at this battle rating and also you know dm33 just to cap everything off so if you're not happy with your standard 410 355 237 you can get up to 481 417 278 to give yourself a little bit of an oomph 
The uh, overall gun itself is definitely the crowning jewel of this uh, machine. The other thing is uh, its camouflages as well. The camouflages are really nice on it. So what we have is, of course, the tricolor, which is probably the most useful one out of the bunch. Then you have the desert camo lace, uh, which, you know, is just a very orangey light brown. Then we have the urban deforming camo, which I personally think is one of the best looking camos in the game, uh, just because of the fact that it's all like um, split up very odd angles looks very au nouveau <laughs> and then uh, we have the tricolor winter camo which is also really nice love uh, this camo especially since it seems like the turret has a different scale uh, to the rest of it and as you can see there that's kind of proven by that it would be nice to see other vehicles which were similar uh, to that and then the unicolor winter is of course just a little bit of snow so as you can see oven deforming camo every day of the week definitely it's it's the the best uh, out of them. Some stuff I didn't uh, mention though, this thing has a stock reload rate of 6.5 seconds. According to the um, according to the stats card or the crew skill, you can get it down to 5 seconds. Now, I've got a feeling this might be an autoloader, because there is no loader, um, but if it isn't an autoloader, and if you can get this 120 down to 5 seconds, that's incredibly good. Um, I'm just wondering who the hell loads this thing. Uh, and then, the gun depression being 7 degrees, it's not the nice one, you know, it, if, if it had 10 degrees, that would be absolutely wonderful, but unfortunately, that's just, uh, you know not the case. 7 degrees will do, um, I just wish it was a little bit more, um, but it should be okay. So, the fact is, when we have a look at the CV9120, this is the top rank vehicle of the Swedish tech tree. It's kind of interesting that Sweden has, oh by the way you can see how the aiming reticle doesn't line up with uh, where I'm looking, yeah that's what I was talking about before. So, it's kind of amazing that the Swedish tech tree has come out with a top tier. And what I mean by that is rank 7 ground. We haven't had a tree come out with its top tier for maybe 3 to 4 to 5 years. And maybe even up to 5 years uh, with um, the American tech tree in um, in ground forces but I'm not exactly sure it just feels like it's been an incredibly long time um, especially when we compare it to other tech trees which have come out in the last two or three years nothing has really been added to the game with its top tier the oh I suppose the Japanese naval stuff has but everything else definitely has not so to see a machine be added into the game, which is going to be very much equivalent to a lot of machines which we see at the high tiers of the game, is just kind of nice to see uh, straight off the bat. It means that people will have something to grind towards, uh, it means people will have something to look forward to once they get through the, you know, uh, early ranks and then get into like rank 3 and rank 4. It's something to aspire to, along with the other CV90s and also the uh, 121, which is pretty much just a Leopard 2A4, uh, which is probably why I'm not going to do a video on it. The other thing is there... Oh, that was an interesting explosion. Uh, so this has this little dome on the top. Now, I'm just going to call it R2-D2. I'm guessing it's maybe... Oops. I'm guessing it's maybe some form of uh, APS system or it's some form of system to try and, like, uh, keep the gun on target or see what I'm doing. I don't know. Like, it's as simple as that. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, but with that uh, thing on top of the turret, unless it is some form of APS, which will get added later on. The only thing I find very odd is that it doesn't conform to any of the camos, and is just kind of a rebel in the making uh, when it comes to, you know, the, uh, the ideas of the tank. The other thing is it would be nice if the optics were just slightly better on this thing. I obviously know that the uh, muzzle velocity of the rounds is incredibly strong, but if we compare the muzzle velocity to this, um, to another you know vehicle of similar BR, um, there aren't many which are going to have worse optics um, when it comes to zooming as you know the CV90-120. The other thing is that it does have dual drive. Uh, so you can turn very quickly in this machine. 
and also of course it sounds like it has the XM1 or the Abrams engine in this which is always uh, interesting to hear. It does get a little bit whiny after a while but I suppose that's just kind of a trick of the trade. <laughs> it's just one of those things you have to deal with uh, when it comes to you know these style of vehicles. Uh, just the wonderful turbines uh, turning everywhere and just making as much noise as possible. This gun in third person, uh, once again, sounds uh, like a revolver going off. Like it, it just sounds like I'm smashing somebody in the face with a revolver. And I don't know whether that's how you're supposed to do uh, these things, or uh, if not. But it is nice to see that um, you know the HE shell doesn't do too much, so using the APF-SDS is the way to go. I always found it very cheap when people try and you know use HE or something in, in place of you know the true king, which is uh, the correct ammunition choices. And at least the CV-9120 gives you a little bit of uh, all of them, so you can get a little bit of spice of life uh, from them and uh, have fun with this, what I think will become a pretty meta vehicle. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I just want to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Daniel Stanton, J. Wilt, John Ryman, Martinez, Super Cacti, Trigger Hippie, Eugene Terry and also Elove Goat and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.